Hey, how's it going everybody? So today I'm finally getting a chance to sit down and make the recap video for Lake Muma, the tournament that I was lucky enough to win this kayak right here. But first, real quick, I want to say thank you. I just hit 100 subscribers. That's pretty cool. I want to try and get into this more, making videos more when I can. I've got a couple things planned. For one, I'm going to be doing some hunting videos when hunting season comes around, which is in two weeks. And I'm also going to be doing the full length review of the Curado DC here soon. I just haven't had a chance to make the video. I said I was going to do it after a month of steady use. It's been about a month and a half, two months. I've used it enough now to where I feel like I can really make a full opinion on the reel. Uh, I mean, I love it, obviously, but uh, we'll, But today we're gonna be talking about the recap from the trip to Lake Muma in Allegheny, Virginia for the Blue Ridge Paddlers Bass Classic. Going into the tournament, I knew that I was gonna be mostly fishing for smallmouth. There was not much info on the lake other than it's a trout lake. It's stocked for trout every year. Basically stock it for trophy trout and make it so there's like six different types of trout in it, but it's 152 feet deep and it's rocky. Those were really the three things I had to go, to really build a plan around for the tournament. I knew absolutely nothing going into it really. There's no info on it. Um, all I'd seen was some pictures of some big smallmouth that people had caught out there during tournaments and stuff. Another thing I saw too was majority of pictures from tournaments, they had mix of smallmouth and largemouth. I didn't catch a single largemouth the entire time I was there. I think one of the other guys caught one. I think there was only one caught all day, but other than that, there was no largemouth caught, and I was kind of surprised by that, but I wasn't upset because I wanted to catch smallmouth. I had never caught one before. That's what I was going there for, so it really didn't bother me. I can catch largemouth around here anytime I want, so I was really trying to target smallmouth. So going into it, I knew that throwing a drop shot would be key and that was my plan was to really focus on a drop shot majority of the day which is not really a good way to plan to throw one bait for most of the day because because you have too much confidence in it and you don't switch then you're gonna screw yourself up which I almost did but we'll get into that so I started the day throwing some top water on a point uh, I saw a bunch of fish in the depth finder real deep they could have been trout but I figured trout would have been up higher but it was like they were in like 40 feet of water on the bottom so it to me seemed like bass i saw some them chasing some bait here and there so i fished a point with the top water for a while through a jerk bait through a few other things through a drop shot then i fished around around into a creek that i had saw on a map that was right across from the ramp that i figured oh, i'll go start there looks good might hold some fish so i went into there at the front of it Started getting some bites on our drop shot, throwing a little three inch Yamamoto shad shaped worm. Love those drop shot baits, they're great drop shot baits. I hooked one that was definitely over 12, that would have been my first fish of the day because it was a 12 inch limit, which made the day super tough. It came off sadly, but not much I could do about it. Uh, so then a little while later, I hooked into a little small one that was. My first smallmouth ever, so that was interesting. My first smallmouth ever was minnow size, so it's not a huge deal. I mean, overall, like I said, I didn't really care. I just was excited to catch some smallmouth and to try something different, fishing a gorgeous lake like that, because nothing around where I live looks at all like that. So I fished a drop shot around that creek for a little while, and then I finally went. I saw some fish busting on bait they could have been trout could have been carp could have been anything but at first there i did see some bass completely come clear out of the water so dropped on top water got one top water bite it just came up smacked it with its tail and that was the extent of the top water bite for the entire day i was hoping to catch some decent sized fish on top water and i only got one bite all day but it didn't really you know it didn't bother me it wasn't a huge deal would have been cool to catch some swans on top water but just catching you know, I was more worried about just catching five fish than I was trying to catch them on anything specific. Whatever I caught them on, I didn't care. If it was something I didn't, th I normally wouldn't throw or whatever, I just wanted to catch fish. So I fished around the creek a little bit more, fished the entire creek with a drop shot, then I picked up a crankbait, first cast of the crankbait, caught a little one. So I was hoping that was gonna be key. Threw that around for half an hour to an hour, didn't get a bite, threw a shaky head, threw couple other things and then finally coming out of the creek right at the mouth of the creek 
Caught my first fish of the day. Took about two hours to catch a keeper fish, but I was just happy to finally have a keeper in the boat and caught it on a little, again, on the little three inch shad shaped worm on a drop shot. My setup, uh, I'll go over the setup I was using at the end of the video. I finally caught my first fish. It was good to get just a fish out of the way. The first fish in a tournament is always the hardest to get out of the way. But after that, I just went on fishing the bank, which I mean, the bank there is 30 feet deep. I caught a fish in 38 feet of water. That's the deepest I've ever caught a fish off of a, just a tree sticking up in 38 feet of water. So that was something that I never thought I would do uh, in this area, at least. So after I caught the first fish, I went over to the next creek over and started fishing. Uh, I fished the bank, and then there was also a stump field in this creek that was just trees and like 50 feet of water, which I didn't didn't really think was a thing in anywhere, but apparently it is. Uh, so I threw up against one tree, let my bait fall for. 20, what felt like an hour, but it was like 10 seconds. And all of a sudden my line was just swimming off and set the hook and landed my second fish. So at this point, I worked my way back to the mouth of the creek, caught a couple more small fish and just worked my way around to another stump field area and caught a ton of little dink fish that I couldn't keep. So at this point, I think it was 9.30 when I caught my second fish, I went on and moved on to another spot on the lake that had a stump field, but it was in shallower water. It was in about 10 to 15 feet of water right off a point in the mouth of a creek. And it just looked, in general, looked like a good spot. And I had felt good about it and had confidence in it. So at this point, I went, I think around two hours without catching my next fish. Uh, so it was around 11.30. The tournament ended at 2.30. So that was when I caught a 16 and 3 quarters. So at this point I had a 13 incher, a 12 and 3 quarter, and then a 16 and 3 quarter. Which it was huge for the tournament. It totally helped having a good kicker fish like that. It was a little over 2 pounds, which is awesome. Now I have a PB to break, by the way. But at this point I had switched from... The shad shaped worm, I went to a little bit bigger profile bait because I was like, the shad shaped worm's working, but I've got to find something that's going to catch me a bigger fish or at least be more likely to catch keepers was my idea behind it. So I switched to a four and three quarter inch Aaron's Magic Robo Worm, another one of my favorite drop shot baits. And I was also using KVD Fish Stick Shad Sense, first time I'd ever used it. and. In my opinion, it makes a big difference. I felt like I started getting a lot more bites. Could just be in my head. The whole, you know, scent, color, hook thing and all that. Who knows if it really works. But to me, it to me it helped. It, I felt like I was getting a lot more bites. But I just cast it up, up behind a tree. I got stuck on the tree and I, usually in situations like that, I panic for whatever reason. Today was different. I would just stay calm, I just waited, I just let the fish come out itself, I didn't try and horse it out, I didn't freak out, I just kind of held towards it and let the fish come out itself, it came out and that was, I don't know how I landed that fish, I was surprised, I did, just luck was on my side that day and I was able to catch that fish. Moving on, I spent close to probably another I would say two and a half hours without a bite and at this point I was getting a little worried and a little frustrated and I was like it's time to switch it up so I went to a rock wall that was in like 80 feet of water and just started fishing right where the rocks dropped off with a trick worm with an eighth ounce swagger tackle tungsten weight code on the screen now where you can get 15% uh, off your order. I wasn't using tungsten for drop shotting just because I assumed I was going to lose a lot of it, which I did. I lost like four whole drop shot setups. So I was just using lead for that day just because I didn't want to go through a bunch of tungsten uh, at this tournament. But I switched over to a trick worm and I started getting bites. I caught, I think, three fish and then finally landed a 12 incher that was barely 12 inches, barely was a keeper to get my fourth fish. This is where the tournament got kind of crazy. So it was around 2.15, I started heading back towards the ramp. The tournament ended at 
I had talked to two other guys and knew that I was ahead of them and the other guy I hadn't talked to yet. So I went literally where I launched the kayak, five feet off the shore, took a cast at 218, caught a 14 incher. That was my final fish for the day. That was huge. It couldn't have gone any more perfect. It was just a huge, huge help catching that last fish right then and there. I was up shocked because I at that point I didn't feel like I was gonna get five fish so I kept fishing I fished around the dock a little bit more hoping I could upgrade wasn't able to upgrade talked to the other guy in the tournament he seemed real confident he didn't say what he had everybody else had told me what he had and I knew I was in at least second place at this point uh, but he was just he was real confident and he wouldn't say what he had or anything so I was like okay well this is gonna be interesting so tournament ended didn't really know what was gonna happen. Then we went to dinner, which is all paid for by them and everything. Huge thanks to Bob over at Bob's Other Creek Outfitters for doing all this. This was a really fun tournament. But of course we ate and everything before they announced who won. I ended up winning by an inch and three quarter. Somehow everything just panned out. Luck was on my side. I didn't lose any key fish. I lost the one in the morning that would have made things a little less chaotic, I'm gonna say, because it would have just it, everything would have felt I would have felt more confident than I did I didn't feel too confident going towards the end of the day but either way I was like if I win or if I lose I don't really care this was an awesome tournament we you know it was a beautiful lake we were able to I was able to catch smallmouth for the first time in my life and meet some awesome people and it was just it was a fun tournament overall but I was I was like I don't know you know I don't know how I'm feeling but in the end I ended up being able to win by an inch and three quarter crazy somehow I still haven't picked up the kayak yet but uh because I gotta take a three-hour drive back up there to pick it up but haven't done that yet but it was awesome I'm really really happy I was able to do this a link to their Facebook page will be in the uh, description down below so if you want to check them out they were it was really awesome of them putting this on it was basically three month long onlines and the top six lengths for all three months got to go fish the blue ridge paddlers bass classic i came in second for all three months i had 302 inches so it was pretty awesome overall it was a lot of fun i'm really really glad i got this opportunity but that's pretty much the recap we'll go ahead and go over the setups that i caught my fish on now everything will be linked down in the description i the setups are outside so i don't want to have to go get them and stuff my drop shot setup was the 69 medium light Enigma Fishing HPT with 2500 Shimano Stratic and 15 pound braid to a eight pound leader. I was throwing super light line all day. I didn't break off on any fish except, I broke off on one fish, which I'm gonna go ahead and assume was a pickerel because I did catch one earlier in the day. And I think it was just my line was all beat up from rocks and stuff too. And I just, I didn't take the time to retie when I should have. Uh, could have been a 25 pounder, who knows. Then the other setup that I was throwing a trick one on was the seven foot medium heavy, which is all around good rod, uh, the HPT. Like I said, they'll both be linked in the description with the Shimano Corrado DC 151 XG. It's the same reel I'm gonna be doing a review on. I was throwing 15 pound Seaguar red label fluorocarbon with that. Uh, like I said, every all the baits, all the stuff will be linked down in the description. Kayaks linked down in the description. This was a really, really awesome tournament. I'm really glad, like I said, I got to have this opportunity. But I hope you guys enjoyed this recap video. If you haven't seen the video from the actual tournament, that'll also be linked down in the description. So go check it out. Real quickly, I just wanna say, I'm gonna be trying to do videos more when I have the opportunity. I'm gonna do some hunting stuff. Hunting season's coming up, so I'm definitely gonna probably do some hunting stuff. Um, I'm gonna try and do some more fishing videos. For one, I'm gonna be working out the audio because I noticed the audio was terrible in that video. I apologize for that. But I'm gonna try and figure out the audio. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Also, follow me on Instagram. It's on the screen and link will be in the description. Hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching. See you next time.